Happy Thursday, everyone, and happy Burpee Day. Oh, it's upon us. It is upon us. It's something that we look forward to every single year. And this year is going to be a little different, but it's going to be a lot of fun. So it uh, kind of reminds me of the first couple of years we did these things, actually. It's, it's a good time. So, yes, what we have for you guys. We have a couple options for you, though. So stay tuned for that. But our warm-up today is going to be all about getting our upper body kind of warmed up and ready to go. We have a plank lean for two to down dog for three to five, scat push up for five to ten, quad plank to down dog for three to five, floor facing angel hold for three to five seconds, and then a humor glide to knee push up for three to five reps. Two to three rounds, work on those skills, get yourself ready to go, primed up, oh yeah. And then we're gonna move down here, we're gonna take down a dynamic triangle for three to five to side, windmill for six, alternating back and forth. Burpee breakdown for three to five, we'll break down that piece and just basically break down the full burpee. And then ankle pop for 20 seconds, rest 10, into an in out step for 20 seconds, rest 10, and jump squat for 10, 20 seconds, rest 10. And then we'll hit that up for as many rounds as you need to get yourself prepped and ready before we start this adventure. So happy burpee day. What is it all about? Well, it's about celebrating the new year with burpees, the best movement out there, body weight style. <laughs> yes. Uh, I know some of you are rolling your eyes or shaking your head saying, no Dave, no, it's not. But I'd like to kindly disagree. I think it is. <laughs> but anyway, burpees, what we got? We have three different options for you guys. We have option number one, which is 365 burpees or squat thrusts for time and quality. So you're just gonna set that number down, you're gonna break them down, set your clock up and see how long it takes you to take those burpees down. Number two, variation number two of this works out. You're gonna set a clock for 20 minutes and you're gonna get as many burpees as you can in that time frame for good quality reps in 20 minutes and just see where you get to. Breaking them down, taking rest, do whatever you gotta do and that's burpee or squat thrust. So 20 minute time frame, get as many reps in as you can. Our third variation is 150 burpees for time and quality. Take it down, set that number up, set a board up with tallies or whatnot and then take it down 150 reps, squat thrust or burpee for time, done. All right, so you're gonna pick one of these options, number one, two, or three. You're gonna rock it hard, have some fun, and you're gonna celebrate the new year with some good old-fashioned burpees. Love them, love them, all right? And then give yourself a really strong and solid cool down afterwards. Let's warm you guys up and get ready to ring in the new year. All right, you guys, let's get those feet under those hips. Let's take the arms big and tall up overhead. We're gonna reach it to one side, reach it over to the other side. We're gonna take those arms up overhead. We're gonna shrug them. We're gonna pull them back down. We're gonna shrug them and pull back down and then shrug and pull back down. We take those hands out to the T. We're gonna turn them in, turn them out, turn them in and out and in and out. Big stretch, bring both hands down behind the neck, ribs in, reach with an elbow, and down. Reach with an elbow, and down. Reach, and down. Reach, and down. Two more. Reach, and down, and reach, and down. Big stretch up, we're gonna forward fold, take it all the way to the floor. Lock up those shins and say hello. We're gonna come down, plant both hands, step back into your plank. We're gonna pull those ribs and hips in, press the shoulders up, and then take those knees down to the floor. We're gonna get some gentle circles, anywhere from three to five reps around those wrists. And then we're gonna go the other way, nice and easy. And then from here, we'll come back to center and fold those fingers to the side, pressing up through the shoulders. We're gonna lean, keeping the shoulders over the hands, just as if we would do it in our plank lean. We're gonna try and keep our cores tight and our bodies nice and active. Then we're gonna pull our fingers to the inside, pressing those shoulders to the sky. We're gonna lean. This is probably the more awkward, we'll say, of the three positions. But we're gonna try and keep those arms as straight as we can and keep that body nice and strong. From here, we're gonna pull right back into the front, grip the floor, pull forward, pressing those fingers, press back, pull forward, keeping those arms straight, back and pull forward and press back. From here we'll curl the toes, extend up into the down dog, just walk the heels out a few times, nice and steady, nice and smooth, just wake up your calves and ankles a bit, come back 
into that plank, toe those feet all the way up. And then roll ourselves up, big stretch, clasp your fingers, press way up, reach straight ahead, round out those shoulders, reach the tops of those hands towards the TV or the computer, and big stretch, and reach, and reach. And come on down with those hands. All right, you guys, if you'd like to take down a little bit more uh, lizard lunge options, some rotations, some more shoulder stuff, please do so. If you'd like to take another run at that wrist mobility work, also please do so. We're gonna spend some time on our hands, so we wanna make sure that those wrists and hands are all ready. What we're gonna do now is focus in on our next phase of work, which is gonna be our plank lean to down dog for three to five reps. So if you're gonna pause the video, take down some more gentle stuff, come back and join us for our upper body warm up set. So hands are gonna come underneath of our shoulders, gripping the floor, pelvis, ribs tucked in, pressing those shoulders to the sky. We're gonna lean to the left, keeping the shoulders over the hands, lean to the right, We'll come back to the center and pull those hips back and up into the air into that down dog. So my armpits are pointed towards the toes. Nice strong shoulders. So I'm gonna press a heel if I'd like. Press another heel and then come back into my plank, setting that good hollow plank up. Ribs and hips, shoulders press. We'll lean and we'll lean. Come back through. Focus on those lats. That good position through the shoulder and then we'll come back into our so again, really focusing on the time spent with that good core engaged, those good shoulders, and that nice active position as we move into our down dog. It's really hard to maintain that position, so we want to make sure we're keeping that shoulder active and we're not dumping into it and losing our neck. So really move smooth. Something that I find is really nice in between those reps, if you wanted to give yourself a little break, you can drop down to your table, work on a cat-cow, come back into your plank, and then go through those leans to down dog. After that, we're going to move into our scat push-up. So I'm going to start facing the camera. And this can be done in a plank and or a table. So what we're going to do is get our arms nice and straight under the shoulders, ribs and hips pulled in, press the shoulders to the sky. Right now I'm at the top of my scat push-up. And I'm going to pull my shoulders together, keeping my core tight and my arms straight, and then press back into that nice protracted position. Pull the shoulders together, press up. Pull the shoulders together, press up, and again, pull the shoulders together and press up. So we're really focusing on isolating that shoulder mobility and that shoulder stability as we shift from that protraction to that retracted position. So a couple of things, if you're gonna do this from the plank position, we wanna make sure that our core position and our shoulder position doesn't change as I pull the shoulders together. So my arms stay straight, and my core and my body position stays in the same position the whole time. We're not losing engagement through our hips and our glutes as I pull the shoulders together. If you find it really tough to do so, you can experiment with uh, tabletop or even just one knee down in this slightly supported plank and that will challenge your position a little bit more into the upper body and load those shoulders just a little bit more than they would be in tabletop. So experiment, play around, keep those scapula up. Our next exercise is our quad plank to down dog. So we're gonna hold each position for three to five seconds. So our knees stay underneath of our hips, my toes are curled under, I pull my ribs and hips in, press my shoulders up, and I'm gonna lift my knees up an inch off the floor. So I'm pulling everything into the center, holding for three to five, I extend up into my down dog, holding for three to five, and then I'll pull back into that quad plank position. So everything pulling in, knees an inch off the floor, and then pull back up into that down dog. If you need to lower your knees to the floor in between reps to reset that quad plank, please do so, all right? I'd rather see you in a good plank or quad plank position than losing that and missing out on that good rib engagement or shoulder engagement coming out of the down dog. So please do so if you need to. It's a challenging movement, but it's gonna get that body nice and warm for what's to come. From there, we're gonna lay on the floor. We're gonna work on our floor-facing angel hold. So I'm gonna get set up just like I would be in a push-up. My hands are gonna be beside my chest. My ribs, sorry, pulled in. My glutes pulled in. Nice little hollow. 
and I'm going to squeeze my shoulders together, pulling my hands off the floor as best I can, and I'm going to lower down. So my goal here <coughs> is to try and keep my wrist stacked under my elbow, maintaining that hollow, and pulling the shoulders straight back, and lifting those hands to whatever height I can. If you can't get your fingers off the floor, that's okay. We're just trying to get that hollow position through the core and that engagement through the upper back. So if your fingers are still touching or if you're like, wow, I can't get very far, that's okay. We're looking for the engagement, not the height. All right, so try not to contort your body to try and get your hands higher off the ground. We're not looking for that. We're just looking for that engagement. If we stay true to the position, things will open up over time. Our last exercise is the human row glides and knee push-up. And it can also turn into human row glides and knee push or plank position. So what we're going to talk about is getting ourselves set up for that push. So I get down in that same position for my floor facing angel. My hands are stacked underneath of my elbows. I'm going to pull my shoulders forward into this dumped position where I don't want them in my push up or my burpee. I'm then going to pull them back, keeping my elbows stacked over my wrist. I'm going to pull my ribs and hips in, and I'm going to push to my knee, maintaining that good hollow in that midsection and my shoulders over my hands. I'm going to lower down, keeping those elbows stacked over my wrist, and then reset the position. So I'll pull my shoulders forward, pull them back, keeping my wrists and elbows stacked, ribs, hips, and press. So if you're looking at that going, that's great, Dave. I got the shoulders, I got the position, I got the tension. I can't push off the ground without losing that rib position. That's okay, we can turn it into an isometric press. So what it turns into is this right here. I pull my shoulders forward into dumb position. I pull them back, ribs, hips, and then I maintain the rib hip position and press and hold and press and hold. And I'm not trying to push it up, I'm pressing into the floor as hard as I can, maintaining that position holding for three to five seconds to help build the strength necessary to continue into that push. So I don't want you to worry about getting all the way up if that means dumping through the midsection. Keep those ribs in nice and tight, work on that isometric push, and work on that engagement super strong. Quick recap for that top piece. We have a plank lean for two to down dog for three to five, scat push up for five to 10, quad plank to down dog for three to five, with a three to five second hold in both positions. Floor facing angel hold, three to five seconds, or sorry, three at five second holds, and then a humeral glide to knee plank or humeral glide to knee push up for three to five reps. Take the time to work on that, you guys, and really start firing up that body positioning because we're gonna need that heavily in the next phase of our work. So use this time wisely, take the time, work positions, it'll heat you up well. Pause the video, take that down. We're gonna move into the next phase, which is gonna be a little bit more mobility for the upper body and a breakdown of the burpee. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off in a sumo stance position. And I'm gonna turn one toe directly to the side, the other toe on an angle. So my hand is gonna to come to the thigh, and my other hand is gonna reach way up to the sky. And I'm gonna pull the hip back as I tread down my shin as deep as I can maintain position. I'm gonna come back up. We'll recognize that we want to keep the legs straight, so we're only going to go as deep as we can maintain that engagement through the hip and that hinge, keeping the legs straight. So sensation, not pain, but we don't want to go so deep that the knee has to buckle. Okay, so even if you're going here and you're like, yep, that's as far as I got, and that's okay, because the body position is there. We're going to do three to five per side. And remember, when we change sides, we want to make sure that our stance is wide enough so we have the space to push into that back hip and find that hip hinge. After our dynamic triangle, we're going to work through our windmill. So I'm going to do a couple reps facing the camera. And we're going to stay in our sumo stance for this. I'm going to have one hand up in the air, my other hand down towards the floor. I'm going to keep my knees soft. I'm going to pull my hips back like a good morning and rotate at the low rib. I'm going to take my hand as far down as I can, and then I'm going to stand back up. Our goal is to keep that armpit and that shoulder position staying solid as I rotate, not letting it dump in to get deeper. Once I'm done that side, I'll switch sides, and I come back 
down, rotating it with a little grip, and coming as deep as I feel comfortable as I move through that range of motion. So from the side, I'm in that sumo stance, hand is up to the sky, I pull back, rotating low rib, maintaining that good stack position for my arms, and I'll take it as deep as I can maintain that position, and then switch sides. So again, don't worry about touching the floor, think about maintaining a good position as we move through this flow. It's a nice chance to open up the hips, the shoulders, the midsection, the T-spine, getting ready for those burpees. Now, after that, what we're going to take down is the burpee breakdown. So even if you don't do full burpees in the work set, that's fine. This will give you a chance to practice the skill of the burpee. So what we're going to do, we're going to break it down into three pieces. The floor, the press, and the pop. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring our hands to the floor. We're going to step or jump our feet back, lowering our body down. Jump. My shoulders are set in that good humeral glide position. My elbows are stacked over my wrist. My core is tight, and now I'm going to press to my knees, just like that knee push-up. And now I'm going to pop my feet in, either stepping or jumping, and stand tall. And go through it again. So we're working on a few key points to work on maintaining good position in each of those spots. So again, as another review, I'll do those, the stepping variation. Hands come down, I step and lower. So my give myself a chance to check my ribs, check my elbows, now I press to my knees, and now I press and step, and go. So we're gonna give ourselves just a little moment in between each of those pieces, the floor piece, the press, and the pop, just to make sure that I'm working on good position for my burpee, okay? So very important, living in those humeral glide points of performance, with the burpee a little bit more dynamically, mind you, but we're still living into those pieces. Good tight ribs, set shoulders, and that nice stacked elbow over wrist. You'll have three to five reps of that to practice, and as you get closer to the workout, you can start taking away the time in between the pieces so that you're building into some full, smooth burpees. After that, what we have is some ankle pops, and we just have these to warm up our ankles a little bit. So we're gonna do 20 seconds. Our feet are gonna be under our hips, my hands are gonna be set out like I'm holding the skipping rope. My shoulders are gonna be relaxed, but my core and glutes are gonna be a little engaged. So I get my little hops going. I have a nice smooth position here, and I'm working on opening up my, rip, my ankles. Now, if you'd like to work on double under timing, you can do that as well. I'm working on maintaining the shape as I get a little higher pop. And with that higher pop, I'm gonna make a slight movement with my hands to symbolize and tell my body that I want to think about my wrist happening at the same time as that hop. So we want to make sure we're joining the two worlds and our timing is being built as we focus on the jump and the posture. Now, if you're like, I'm not a jumper, Dave, that's, that's fine. We're just using this to warm up our ankles a bit. So you can work on toes straight ahead under the hips and we can work on some nice calf raises, either slow on the way up and slow on the way down or a little bit more aggressive on the up, down. But we're gonna work on that nice, smooth engagement and balance between the big toe and the pinky toe so that we're not rolling out to one side. We're staying super balanced between the foot and working on that nice, smooth press. You have 20 seconds of that, 10 seconds rest, and after that, you're gonna move into some in-out steps. So the in-out steps are gonna start in your squat stance, you're gonna step in it, and you're gonna step out. You're gonna work on some footwork for 20 seconds. You can take that fast, you can take that slow, you can just use it to work on footwork and coordination. All right, if you have like a little step, that you have like a little plate-like thing, you can use that to step on and off of, to work on some agility as well. So you can play with that. You got 20 seconds to work that skill, 10 seconds of rest, and then we're gonna move into the jump squat just to give you one more chance to get the heart rate up, and work on opening up those hips, knees, and ankles. So I'm gonna to turn to the side, and I'm gonna show you the three different variations of jump squat we can play with today, or mix and match all three over the course of your warm-up. My feet are in my squat stance. I'm gonna take my hips to my heels, my knees track the toes, and my feet stay nice and flat. So I'm working on keeping that flat foot contact, that mid-foot balance, and that tall torso. So I can work on my air squat, 
I can work on the non-jumping jump squat where I take my hips down and then I drive up and down. So I'm working on a more aggressive up where my heels may come off the ground, but then I pull myself right down into that good air squat and work on that deceleration. Or I can work the full jump squat, which is that leaving of the ground. Same setup, same air squat down, I drive up and then I pull into the bottom position absorbing and working on that deceleration. So it's a great skill, great way to get that body warmed up and those ankles warmed up within reason in terms of where you want to take it for today. So ease into that, use it for what it's there for just to get the heart rate up, ankles, knees and hips ready for action in the burpees to come. Quick recap, we have three to five dynamic triangle per side, six alternating windmills, so total count, three to five with a burpee breakdown, so breaking it into the floor, the press, and the pop. Working on finessing those key points of performance in that piece. Then we're gonna move into the ankle pop or calf raise for 20 seconds, rest 10. In out steps, whatever speed you wanna go, 20 seconds, rest 10. And then a nice jump squat of whatever variation or combination of variations you'd like to play with, 20 seconds, rest 10. You're gonna repeat that as many times as you need to to get yourself ready for what's to come. And what's to come? So pause the video, take down whatever you need to do, scroll back, get some points of performance in any of those movements you need, get yourself ready for the burpee. We're gonna break down some options of the movements now for your burpees, but right now, choose what option you're gonna take down. So if you're gonna take down number one, you're doing 365 burpees for time, breaking it down any way you need to, just setting your clock and working for quality and time. Number two, Variation number two, you're gonna set the clock for 20 minutes and you take down as many burpees as you can with good form and good movement in that time frame. And then number three, burpee, 150 reps for time and quality. See how long it takes you regardless and take it from there. So have some fun with those options, you guys. We're gonna break down the burpee and the squat thrust. So the burpee itself, without breaking it down in, the, in our warm up piece, nice and smooth, I come down with my hand, I jump, back, push up right away, and then I get a little hop and clap at the top, that nice triple extension. It's a big focus here, you guys. I want you to make sure that we open up our hips and our body up nice and tall. We don't have to jump super high, but I would like you guys to open up your hips. So what we have to watch out for, especially as we get fatigued, is something that looks like this. So I'm not opening up my hips at all. I'm staying quite bent over and hinged. So we want to make sure that we're opening up everything up and getting nice and tall, okay? So another variation of that burpee, we can have a step back and down, so we lower and step back up, or we can have any variation of the two. Jump back, step in, step back, jump in, whatever you want to do, whatever allows you to maintain that good position. Focusing in the burpee, we want to make sure we keep our tight core, but we also want to make sure we hit that nice, bottom position, wrist over elbow, and that nice solid shoulder position and elbow position, like a push up or a floor press. So we're hitting that position every time. Our squat thrust option, very similar, except my hands come down, I pop into my plank, I pop it back in, or hands come down, I step back, pop it in, or I jump back, step in, or finally, hands come down, step back, step in. Any of those options or variations are totally legit. The big thing with this one is we're setting our shoulders up, hands underneath of the shoulder, our core is tight, our glutes are tight, and we hit that strong plank every single time. So if you feel yourself starting to dump into your shoulders or into your hips, take a little break, take a moment, and then hit the next rep super strong and solid. Now, Take your time with this today, you guys. Have fun. It's a celebration of the new year to come and a celebration of things to come. And there's no better way to celebrate than burpees. So every burpee, just say, yay! Happy burpee day. And I hope you guys have a ton of fun. If you have any questions, please shoot me a message. Have fun with this one, you guys. Work for quality. And we'll see you tomorrow for a nice recovery workout. Bye, you guys. And happy new year. Stay safe, have fun, and enjoy.